friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today we're going to talk about planting a bare root rose. And uh, this is something that everyone can do. You can find roses very inexpensively at your local big box store or at the garden center, or you can find some more expensive varieties online and order them really to your heart's content. You can go low budget to all the way up to the most rare species. But bare root planting is the same no matter how much your plant costs. So let's take a look and see how to go about it. Okay, so um, to get started, what you'll need is a bare root rose. I picked this one up at a local big box home improvement store. This cost me $12.98, which, you know, this was the more expensive of the two kinds they had there. But um, for $13, I think I'll get a long, beautiful life out of this rose. Um, this is the Summer Fashion Rose. It's a beautiful yellow tinged with pink around the outside. It's going to be beautiful. And this is a Floribunda Rose, which means that it grows um, into a nice shrub style space and it will have a light fragrance a bushy habit and it makes great cut flowers so this is what I'm planting to get started you need a bucket of water a bucket of soil or a wheelbarrow or whatever you need some gloves some clippers a spade and some kind of fertilizer now I'm going to be using this biotone starter because it has these mycorrhizae I don't know how to say that but it has things in it that are beneficial for root development and that's actually what's recommended on a lot of the rose resellers websites is something that has this root development hormone in it or bacteria or or I don't know what that is but anyway um, I'm gonna be using this biotone starter but if you don't have that that's fine you can use rose tone which is a wonderful rose fertilizer or you can use any general purpose um, fertilizer that you like I happen to like the organic ones uh, that makes me feel better about my garden but you use whatever you need to use to make your garden grow all right so um let's see i think the first thing to talk about is where to where to plant your rose roses are sun lovers they really want as much full sun as you can give them if you live in a very hot climate they might enjoy some afternoon shade in the hottest part of the day but for for most purposes, finding the most sun you can give them is a good idea. Um, at least four hours, six or more is better, and all day sun would be fine, as long as they're not baking in a really hot climate. So for my garden, I'm going to be putting it into one of the very few full sun spots that I have in our backyard. We have so many trees on our property. Finding full sun is a challenge, but I have found a spot. Let me show you. I've picked out this spot right here where my little spade is dug into the ground to put in my new rows. This will get about um, uh, about seven hours worth of sun every day in the summer. Um, it starts being in full sun around 11 a.m., maybe a little earlier as the summer comes on. And then it'll be uh, full sun all afternoon until uh, I think around, well, it won't be seven hours. It might be five or six hours. Anyway, so that's where it's going to be. This is going into an extended flower bed that we're just created. We've just finished edging um, the, the lawn to create about two more feet worth of flower bed in a nice curve along here. So um, this will be kind of the centerpiece of this portion of the flower bed. When you're planting your bare root rose, you want to dig a hole at least 14 inches, probably better to be 16 or 18 inches in diameter and depth. So a nice big hole to get started with your rose. inches in diameter and about 14 inches deep. Um, now I forgot to mention earlier when you're siting your rose you don't want to put it where it has a lot of root competition from trees or shrubs. Right here all we have is the lawn and some hostas and we'll be putting in more perennials here but there are no big trees whose roots are in here. There used to be some trees nearby They've been taken out, so when I encountered those roots in there, it was from old trees. So 
I was able to just dig those roots out. So try to avoid competing roots with your roses because that'll just take nutrients away from the roses. Okay, so now that I have my spot prepared, what I'm going to be doing is opening up this rose and soaking it in water. These roots have been packaged up like this since the end of last season, most likely. And so I'm just gonna unwrap it and soak it in some water and get it rehydrated. Now this has a little wire enclosure at the top here. I'm just untwisting it and pulling that off. Oop, there it went. Okay, and I did bring out some scissors in case I had trouble getting this plastic wrap off. Let's see how I do here. Yeah. Now this rose, um, the top of it, the green part, has been dipped in wax. And that is so that it doesn't lose too much moisture over the winter as it was packaged up in this package and set out on a retail shelf. Now, if you order online from a rose grower, it may or may not come with this wax covering on the stems. This doesn't hurt anything and it helps keep the, um, keep the rose from drying out over the winter because it was pretty severely cut after it was last in the soil. All right, so you can see that inside the plastic, it's been wrapped in some brown paper. I'm having trouble getting this off. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to unwrap this brown paper and it's gonna have some soil in it. So let me do this here. And you can see this is a very sandy soil. It's just a growing medium that the grower used. Um, I'm gonna actually get all of that off of there to expose the roots. And you can begin to see the roots that are on this plant. Okay. Actually, these are very moist already, so I'm not terribly concerned that they are dehydrated, but I will still soak this in a bucket of water for about two hours and just make sure that all these roots are nice and moist and uh, give that plant the best start that it can get to its new growing environment. Okay, now that I have my hole dug, I'm gonna put in some compost. I'm also, you know, the top of this is the growing medium that the bare roots were in. That's fine, I'm just gonna stick that in the hole as well. It'll add some good drainage and stuff. But underneath there, I have good compost I'll be putting into the hole. Good. And now I'm gonna make it into a little cone shape at the bottom of the hole so that I can spread the roots out over top of that. made a little mound, a little pyramid of soil down in the bottom of the hole. The next step, I'm going to put in some Biotone starter fertilizer. Um, the rate on the back of the package says one and a half cups per planting hole for a new rose, so that's what I'm going to do. I put some of it in the bottom of the hole and I'll mix the rest of it with the backfill soil. Okay, you may have noticed I changed gloves. I've got my uh, thicker leather gloves on. And um, now I've got the rose out of the water. Um, I'm going to spread the roots apart and kind of lay the roots down on top of that mound of soil down in there to the best of my ability. I'm just backfilling enough to hold it in place whatever I can get my hands on at the moment. And now I'm gonna use this compost to backfill the rest of the hole. I'm gonna mix in this biotone into there.
then to come up to the rest of the level of the rest of the bed, I'll just use this other older soil. It's actually a fairly decent quality soil over here. It's full of wild onions though. Ugh. Bane of my garden. and then I'll keep it watered at least twice a week for the duration of this first season. I will also mulch it and that helps keep the soil moist underneath there and it also helps prevent weeds around it. I do expect to be getting some weeds back because we have just taken sod out of this area. So, um, but yeah, from here on out, I will fertilize this rose. Uh, let's see, here we are at the early April. I'll fertilize it again, probably in mid-May and then once again at the end of June, so every six weeks or so, then I'll stop so that it doesn't put on too much new growth toward into the fall when it should be going dormant. So, ah, thank you so much for joining me here at Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I hope that you have some beautiful roses in your garden. Let me know in the comments below if you've had success planting bare roots or if you plan to put any bare roots in. Let me know what varieties. Um, so this is summer fashion and I'll be sure to give you some photos of it and videos of it as it grows on in the summer. Thank you so much, friends. Have a great day. Bye.